UN estimates, there could be as many as 11.2 billion humans on this planet by the end of this century. But as the population rises, so does the demand for food and energy. And this could have a huge impact on rural areas and our biodiversity. We meet some countryside heroes in this episode of Sustainable Energy. I'm Asha Sampot. Welcome to Brittany. We are not very far from the Atlantic Ocean, which provides the year-round rainfall that makes this region the country's top agricultural producer. It exports more meat and fish than any other region in France, but industrial farming and climate change are threatening its land. So Brittany now is betting big on sustainable development to protect its natural heritage. As ever, I'll be joined by an expert throughout the show. Yann Laurence works at a think tank here in France that advises governments on ways to protect biodiversity around the world. Coming up on this episode, we look at how the world's growing population, especially in cities, is having an impact on rural environments. Then we head to Zimbabwe, where a remote farming community has been harvesting rainwater to greet its arid land. Tunorim. We do gardening using a solar-powered borehole for watering. And finally, we go to Colombia, where a woman is teaching farmers how to read the weather for better land productivity and sustainability. We collect information on temperature and precipitation, and using this information, they are able to work with climate. The figures show that protecting nature is essential. A 2019 intergovernmental report called the loss of biodiversity a global threat. Good news though, some say that nature-based solutions could be the answer. But are those solutions enough? Especially as growing megacities are putting even greater pressure on the countryside to provide food and energy for their ever-expanding populations. Over half the world's population live in cities, and the UN predicts 70% of us will be city dwellers by 2050. It's easy to see what lures people to big cities. There's entertainment, better infrastructure, easier access to services, such as healthcare and education. And of course, there's the big one, greater employment. The vast majority of jobs in rural areas are in the agriculture sector, but advancements in machinery, fertilizers, crop protection, and other science-based technologies produce better yield and that means less people are needed to work the soil. But experts say that large-scale farming could be causing a lot of disruption to rural biodiversity. Crop and livestock production consumes over a third of the world's land surface and three quarters of freshwater resources. And it's not just food. Rural areas also have to provide for growing energy needs. In 2014, cities accounted for roughly 70% of global energy consumption and related greenhouse gas emissions, while occupying only 2% of the land. That matters because most rural communities are in low-income countries, and the UN says they're more exposed to climate change, including increasing the number of so-called climate migrants. Take Lake Chad in Africa's Sahel region. It's a source of livelihood for 40 million people across four different countries. Chad, Cameroon, Niger, and Nigeria. But it's shrunk. 90% has gone in just 60 years, and that's been cited as a contributor to as many as 5 million people leaving the area, causing environmental, social, and economic upheaval. So, can rural areas fight back? Across the world, rural communities are taking a stand. Sustainable agriculture is on the rise, with small-scale farms. And large energy providers are turning to renewable energies and becoming more biodiversity-friendly. And more nature-based solutions are underway.
I left the coast to explore the countryside with our guest, Yann Laurence, the director of the Biodiversity Programme at IDRI, the Institute for Sustainable Development and International Relations. Hello, Yann. We're delighted to have you with us. Hello, Asha. So we're here at an eco-village started by eight young farmers who moved to the countryside to make a change. So can you tell us a little bit about this place? Yes, they, it was a, a farm that was abandoned 20 years ago and that is taken up now by these farmers and their landowner, uh, Anne-Marie, and they are trying to, let's say, rebuild uh, a traditional agriculture, uh, however, modernized system with vegetables, with uh, fruits, with uh, sheep, and the idea is also to sell these products to the people that live around. On one hand, we have a new trend here with young people like the families who live here willing to commit to rural life. Then, on the other hand, you have a country like France, the largest in Western Europe, with acres of abandoned lands and villages. Is rural flight a threat for the environment? And are authorities doing something about it? It is a global threat. Uh, think that 80% of biodiversity worldwide is in areas where traditional production, people, uh, way of life is happening. So when we lose these people that live in the countryside, in the mountains, in the savannas, when they fly to the city, we are losing the biodiversity that's accompanying this system. And that's one of the explanations of why biodiversity is actually decreasing so strongly. Of course, governments try to do something. They invest in rural areas in terms of, for example, roads, hospitals, schools and all this. But this is not enough to fight against the, let's say, the general economic system of which we are part, all of us. What environmental challenges does the countryside face around the world? Two major challenges. One is the, let's say, the encroachment from urban environments to the countryside. Uh, we are growing, demographically growing, and we are also growing in terms of um, the use of space. Think of all these roads, uh, the harbors uh, that are built uh, and destroy the landscape, the forest, by cutting it into small pieces. That's one uh, threat. The other one is the very general standardization of landscape uh, due to um, the spread and the in increase of farming and, and of industrial farming. And this is mostly due to animal products. Three quarters of the agricultural expansion today is due to uh, feeding or pastures for animals. So the countryside also provides energy to the cities? It used to uh, provide a lot of energy to the cities with wood, especially coal, um, but it's uh, doing less now. Of course, there is biomass, biofuel, hydropower, which are all produced in, this, in, the, in the countryside, let's say, but it's less important today than it used to be in the past uh, for providing energy for the cities. And it's probably growing again uh, with the intensification of use of, uh, again, biofuel, biomass, hydropower, all this. Uh, even solar energy, all these decentralized sources are more and more produced in the countryside. Thank you, Jan. We've got to take a quick break. When we return, we head out to Zimbabwe to find out how rainfall and sunshine have helped transform lives. I look at water as if it's my God, because all my life is centered around it. 